Hey everybody, Steve Basic Architect here, live from the hole in the ground. Yes, bringing you the build show right from the foundation. I put my life on the line every week for you guys, bring these videos to you live right from the job site so you understand this isn't a video that was recorded three years ago. This is stuff that we are doing today. And what are we doing today? We're talking about ICF foundations. Yes, insulated concrete forms. So I have one of them right here. What an insulated concrete form is, is basically it's two pieces of rigid insulation. They have a spacer in between and then they get filled with concrete. So there's a couple things that are benefits right off the bat to using ICF forms. One, you get the insulation is your form work, but then the insulation just stays in and becomes the insulation to your wall system. The other thing is, is a typical foundation here in New England, we would pour a 10 inch wall. Here, we're pouring a six and a quarter inch wall. So that core is diminished. So we're basically taking about 40% of the concrete out of the foundation system without really jeopardizing its integrity. So the forms that we're using here, these are 11 and three quarter inch forms. They have two and three quarters on each side of EPS insulation. So that's gonna give us right around an R2425 um, insulation R value for this. They have a six and a quarter inch core. They are 16 inches tall and they are 48 inches long. So we're very fortunate. We got Danny from Blue Green Building Concepts out here. They're the subcontractor doing all the foundation work out here. If you saw the video, um, the last video we shot, all the foundation work, the footing work was done by those guys. But we're gonna catch up with Danny down in the hole and we're gonna talk about how this is get, how all of this gets installed. So let's get going. All righty, Build Show. Like I said, we got a treat. We got Dan here. Dan's from Blue Green Building Concepts. They're the subcontractor out here doing the work. They are very experienced. We're very fortunate to have them on this job here. Um, Howell Custom Building Group is the uh, general contractor and uh, Blue Green Building Concepts are the concrete sub. They're taking care of the foundation and taking us up to the top of the wall. Like you saw earlier, we're using that uh, 11 and three quarters by 16 inch block. But Dan, you guys have a, a typical layout or kind of structure to how you lay this out right now. Tell us a little bit about that. You usually start in the corners? Sure. We kind of start from the corners and work our way all the way to the middle. Um, we have a left and right corner, so everything is staggered, and then it meets in a common scene or somewhere in the wall. Um, right. So all these corners, these corners have either a short leg or a long leg so that they're able to be stitched together and right. reinforce that corner so yeah. that there's not this vertical right. seam, right? Exactly. So we get that overlapping that allows it to gain its strength, if you will, exactly. right? Yep. And then if you see here, you've got these ribs on these blocks. They almost slide together perfectly too. So when they- So there's a female part. recipient and then there's a male Correct. part on there. Now you guys do uh, what I thought was a really interesting detail on the footing itself, right? So tell us a little bit, I'm, I'm holding it. This is a starter track for a steel stud wall, but Tell us a little bit about sure. what you do there. So what we do, we uh, here we had everything nice uh, staked and um, uh, surveyed for us when we started the project, uh, after, even after we poured the footing. So what we ended up doing was we squared all the corners out and we lay our tracks down. And this helps us, A, stabilize the wall so it doesn't keep moving. And um, also it creates, we have the most pressure on the bottom of our, our, our blocks when we pour concrete. And when you say pressure, that's when the concrete goes in, the weight of the concrete is pushing it and it wants to kick out and blow out the bottom. Correct. Right? So what we use is this metal stud and then we have essentially, we are able to screw some Phillips screws right into the bottom to secure our blocks and be able to have a nice uniform straight line as we- Right, so this basically, you, you snap the line, this gets set down on top of the footing, it Correct. gets shot in, and then we're able to take the block and basically put it in yep. and push it up against there. So now you have that bracing on that side, and then you can just simply screw into the uh, exactly. ICF block. And then here we have eight inches on center, essentially, you know, furring strips. So we're able to screw this all in, no problem. And get that in there. So, no, that's awesome. Now, you said that you 
start off in the corners and you work your way to the middle. Now, these are four foot blocks. I would almost guarantee it's probably rare that you have a wall that's on a 48 inch um, setup, right? Correct. So, Correct. so how, do we, how do we deal with when the wall is say uh, 33 feet, uh, 10 and a half inches? So what we end up doing, we start with both corners and work our way to the middle. And we have to figure out where our bracing goes to be able to kind of secure everything nicely. And we create a common common seam, essentially. And so you guys have a detail for that. I saw it when we were walking down into the hole over here. So yeah. why don't we just jump over there and we could talk about how you solve that uh, Perfect. vertical seam problem. Sounds good. All right. So we're over here at this section. They built in from the corners. And so what that does is it gives you that oddball dimension in the middle of the wall. So they inevitably end up cutting in this vertical seam. And the way you solve that is a simple plywood gusset plate, right? Correct. Yeah. So do you guys have a, a pattern? Is there concerns about what you're doing here? So what we typically do, our first row is the same as our third row, so even and odds. And our second row is, you know, continuous with our fourth row. So what we do is we mark our first couple rows here and then it continues as we as we build up. So it's the same cut all of that. Um, we like to make sure our plywood at least catches at least two ribs on one side and then the other one at least one so we can you know secure that together. And then we were talking earlier now there's a reason why you stack these and you don't say have this here and then have this one over here and this one over there and stagger them right? Correct. It has to do with when you're bracing the wall. Our braces are usually between five and six feet apart so we start from the corners two feet away and then we essentially build our way as far as we can and you know obviously not anything will line up five or six feet but we'll right but this allows you to put bracing say here yeah. and then catch yeah, exactly. bracing over there and by having that in the middle, it helps you, uh, yep. you know, to keep that stuff out of your way, right? Exactly. So we have a detail over here that we can just walk over the step footing. Um, you know, we, we talked about that Sorry. in the uh, concrete. You're fine. You're fine. You can see it here. But how the ICF blocks and how the step was coursed out, right? So it's coursed out perfectly so that it that one step here and what i'm talking about really is this dimension from here to here is exactly the dimension of two courses of blocks so we didn't get into having to cut a block or that so in the planning stages we're laying out all of these details and ensuring that we're getting it just right so there's uh, some things to look at inside the block why don't we get up we'll take a walk over to the wall there and uh, we'll talk about what's happening in the inside these blocks all right, so Dan uh, did a, gave us a little treat here. He dismantled a little bit of the wall so we can see down inside. You know, we talked about it earlier that the core has these braces in there, but these braces have these little scallops and hooks in them, right, Dan? So tell us what those are all about. Yep. Yeah. So uh, we have on the outside, we have uh, room for a number five bar. So we typically use those. Um, in the middle, you've got a number four bar that can run uh, all the way. And then number three, uh, two, two holes for number three there. And for our non-construction viewers, when we're talking bar, we're talking reinforcing bar, right? right? So Correct. these just basically fall right in. And you can see down here, they already have some of them placed. And you can also see we have the vertical leg that comes out of the footing. So the concrete will go down there, grab that, and that keeps that horizontal displacement of the wall sturdy. And then these horizontal bars basically will get tied to some vertical bars in here also. So we basically have this steel cage that's happening inside here. Now, that takes care of the structural requirements that the structural engineer gave us. But there's certain things that have to happen and that you do that allows you to put this together keep it fastened so the, the blocks don't blow away, doesn't come apart, right? So talk a little bit about that for us, Dan. Sure. So we can see here when we connect our blocks, we have these uh, vertical clips and they basically allow us to hold uh, each block together, um, which helps us stabilize the wall uh, during our pours. So and what that does is that just keeps this block from lifting up Correct. on those blocks. Correct. So the vertical 
snugness of the wall, if you will, is taken care of by every time you put a block in, you snap in one of these. Now, these Correct. are made by the ICF manufacturer, exactly. right? So right. they ship those out and you get the whole package here. So you're not going and finding a place to get those bent or made. Now, what do you, is there anything that we do when the blocks come together horizontally? Yes, there's a clip right here, as you can see, with the same thing, it clips in nicely. And typically what we do is one vertical per block and then horizontally clip to the next block, which is clipped vertically as well. So, so those are pretty not, much on four foot center. Exactly, you don't overkill basically. it too much, but it helps stabilize. And we do a lot more for the first two courses, which for us is very important because that's when we place the concrete, we go three courses at a time, but the most pressure is in those two, first two, two blocks there. Um, gotcha. Now, I noticed that we have the, the metal ties, but I see a zip tie over here. Talk mm -hmm. to me, like, why did we switch? So this right here is the common seam, which we uh, discussed earlier. Uh, it's connected by the plywood. Corners, we work from our corners to, the, to one area. Uh, we choose to do it closer to the corner so we can put one brace here and another staggered. And then basically what we do is this is too big for the vertical clip. So we still use uh, 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 zip ties here to tie them together just to give that extra reinforcement. Okay. Um, Stable pretty neat system and i mean it's you know it's pretty rigid you get some concrete in there this is going nowhere so exactly. why don't we step over there you got some really cool stations and some pretty cool tools let's uh go look at some of the tools of the trade that's happening here all right so we have a couple cutting stations you can see all of the rebar is stationed down here they drop it down in the hole you don't want to be handing it bar by bar when you're down here, right? <laughs> you wanna make sure you have everything down here. I see you have a cutting station over there so you can cut all the rebar to the length you want. But this is a pretty nifty little tool here. And you know, you, you've you said something earlier to me that I've heard pretty much for the last 30 years, work smarter, not harder. That's right. Right, so this is a, you know, typical, uh, or not to say atypical, <laughs> bending machine. So a lot of times you get the rebar and it might come pre-bent from a factory. You go through the shop drawings and they just send you, you know, 300 pieces of bent rebar. But if you want to do it out on the site and kind of manufacture or fabricate it yourself, then you need some kind of tool, right? So he's going to let me, this is my first time bending <laughs> it, so bear with me. I'm told I just pull the trigger here. That's right, nice and slow. And then the release is. The release right here. So almost a nine. I overbent it a little. <laughs> we'd have to bend that back. Okay. But uh, I mean, you pull the trigger and bam, there it's you go. Easy. It so. beats it beats our uh, hand hand you know rebar bender wow. that we have. It's hot. Oh, it is. <laughs> All it's right. Crazy. So. So there you have it, folks. We're down here in the hole. Dan, thanks for, uh, you know, giving us all your quick tips and sharing your uh, vast experience of putting these together. Um, we'll, we'll come back at you more as this, you know, project uh, progresses. And we'll talk about, you know, when the bracing is up and try and get out here when they're uh, casting the walls and all of that. But thanks for uh, the tips and the uh, initial layout from the build show. Steve Basic Architect, until next time. Okay.